Well, hello internet. I'm back to a half reasonable looking kind of non-zombie type person. Throat's still a bit, uh, but there you go. You have to bear with me. Um, it's a blue clear sky day today. Um, let's see if that changes as the day goes on. But one job I really want to get sorted today, if I can, is look at the ABS sensor on the Tigra just here. Um, let me explain more. So obviously I had this wheel off um, in the last video. What I did notice is, now some of these things are of, um, well, it looks like they took a bread knife to the tins and the uh, dust covers of the discs on the back of this car, um, completely ripped them off. But in the process, seemed to have cut through the ABS wire. Been doing a bit more digging and took a few sort of videos from underneath the car, um, off camera, obviously. And yeah, what's definitely happened, they've chopped the wire to the ABS sensor. Now, I can get a new ABS sensor, but on the Tigras, the ABS sensor is also the hub. Now, the hub is perfectly fine on this. There's no problem. The bearings are great. No problems at all with any of it. Um, but it all comes as one unit. And that unit, there's only one I can find in the UK. And it's £100. Now, I'll buy it if I need to. But for the sake of a chopped wire... The first thing I'm going to do is see if I can get this hub off and fix that wire because I believe that if I reconnect it again that everything's going to be fine and I'd save myself £100. So we shall see how the day pans out really. Um, like I say it's a nice, um, it's a cold day but it's a sunny day so I'm going to get the back end jacked up, get all this stripped down and uh, you'll join me for it. Lucky you. So, stage one, create an absolute mess. <laughs> Every tool out the garage and muck everywhere. So, let me tell you what I've done so far. Obviously, wheel off, jacked up, um, brake caliper off. So, what you've basically got is at the top there, you've got one 13mm bolt and a 15mm locking bolt there. See, so well, a 15, I think it's a 15mm. I think it used 11 sixteenths or something. But 15, 13mm bolt, let me just show you, it goes in the end there. That holds the top on. The bottom arrangement is a little more strange. Um, I believe this is a, an anti-vibration damper or stop squealing damper or some sort of damper. I know Vocals of old used to squeal on the back brakes all the time, so I'm guessing this is something to stop that. Um, so basically you've got a 10mm on the back end there, and then you have got a 13, yeah, 13 mil just there. So so that balancer comes off. The 13 mil there, and again a locking 15 there. Um, your caliper then, you can get rid of. Mine's tied up there at the moment. So next job, um, the carrier off. You have got these horrible star drivey things here. Um, let me see if I can lay my hands on the right one and tell you what it is. Oh, look at that first first shot. So that is a where are you? E14. There you go. Let me turn the camera around, you'll see it better. So E14, we'll get that carrier off. So once the carrier's off, disc off, and then I think it's four bolts at the back I've got to take off, and the whole hub should come away. Right, let's get on with it. So that's the carrier off, and uh, yeah, that's pretty blooming tight. <laughs> so these are your, um, well, call them bolts, call them nuts, well, call them whatever you want. Um, but yeah, I had the, the impact on it, had the breaker on it, and... Uh, I had the ratchet on it. It took some grunting. Right, disc off next. Uh, for reference, that is a, I believe, a T30. It is, yeah, T30 in there. Um, I know people are going to shout at me, but these strip so easily. I just give it a quick nip with the impact wrench. Yes, it's too much, um, but shocking, it seems to be the only way these come out properly without rounding them off. You try it with... Uh, a normal socket and uh, I don't have much success. Anyway, let's have a go. Yeah, and there you go. Came out straight away, no problem. A little bit shocking does seem to be the best way, but uh, that's my opinion, not everybody's. Right, this off so I know what I'm working with. Um, that is the ABS sensor just there. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, that wire's just been chopped. Uh, whether it's done intentionally or by accident, I don't know, makes no difference but it is chopped. So that seems to be a magnetic pickup and then it picks up on a magnetic ring on the back of the hub itself. Um, I'm hoping everything else is okay, I'll be honest. But uh, really, I suppose it could work 
work on that wire with the hub in situ but I'd rather try and get this hub off to be honest uh, just to make it easier on myself I believe on the back it is those silly star drives again uh, so once I figure out which one it is I'll let you know so it does seem like the same socket of the uh, bolts at the back of this I'm having to take off the uh, the shock as well because yeah, it's just in the way um, let me get that out and I'll show you what socket did we use for that one? It is a, oh, I can't see because the sun's in the wrong direction. E20, looks like, yeah, E20. There you go, so that bolt out, that's pretty easy to get out to be honest. I may even replace the shock, I'll see how bad they are. But uh, yeah, you really need the shock out of the way to uh, to get to the hub, to get to the bolts on the back. They're pretty gnarlyed up to be honest. Um, so. Yeah, they're going to need lots of WD and lots of uh, fettling. Well, to be honest, not as bad as I was expecting. Um, you can see the bolts were a little groggy, but they came out okay. Um, that to me looks like part of the old uh, tin protector at the back. Well, it could be shims. Um, no, I think that's part of the old dust dust protector I've got some new ones coming so uh, I am going to replace them um, I was told yeah you can leave them off I don't need them but yeah I like to do things properly um, and there is the hub so um, yeah there is the problem just there that wire been cut so I'm hoping somehow I can open up that part of it and somehow join the wires it's going to be tricky I know that but I could save myself some money here so we will see Right, the next thing I need to struggle to get to now is the other end. There's the plug, right in there. Let me show you. I need to get that plug out so I'll see what I've got to work with. There you go, one plug. You can see where it used to go through the tin. And they've just basically... Well, so... <laughs> looks like a 12-year-old with a bread knife hacked the tins off this, but... Uh, at least we have all the bits. That's the one good thing. Right. All I've got to do now is connect it to there. Oh, there you go. Straight away. Easy. Fixed. Yeah, if only. <laughs> well, that took some very careful picking, but I've exposed the wires. So, doing all right so far. So, all we've got to do now is join those to those. The right way around, of course. Not that way. Yeah, that way. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to be very, very careful. Uh, obviously lots of shrink wrapping to go on there as well and I should be using, where is it? Uh, hold on a second, let me find it. I should be using something of that to pack it out as well. Um, if you've never used this before, it's what they tend to use on circuit boards. Um, liquid le electrical tape, easy for me to say, sorry. I'm still a bit there at the moment. Um, but yeah, this stuff, um, once it hardens off, it takes a while to harden. But it um, it's good for sealing, protecting and keeping the moisture out. Um, so if we're going to do it, we'll do it properly. So getting myself all prepared, soldering iron, take those away from it, soldering iron's warming up. I've got some outer heat shrink on there, some inner heat shrink on those, and the wires all stripped back. So, uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay, just about ready to get soldering. I'm uh, not sure if you can see this, but there you go. Oop, let me get out the light. You might stand the fight chance. There you go. So I've got it prepared. I've got the wire strip back. I've got shielding on there. I've also got some of the electrical glue in there <laughs> to make sure that nothing gets in and rots it away. So hopefully now if I can solder it up and then get all the heat shrink put in place, it should be in a good place. Well, that was a bit of a struggle, to be honest. Um, I don't know what wires these are, but they take some heat to, to get anything into them. But I'm pretty happy the way it's gone now. Um, they're on there. They're solid. They're not going anywhere. So now I've just got to make sure that I get plenty of gap between them. Make sure that the wires are not touching. And uh, probably first test continuity, then stick it back on the car. I'm going to have to take it back off again at some point because I was hoping the... The rear dust covers, the tins would be here by now, and they're not. They've been delayed till next week, so gotta do this all again. But I know what I'm doing now. <laughs> Should be easy.
<laughs> well, I'm going to do the OBS center again. You, you know what I mean. Got to do the hub again. Right. Waffle over. Let's get on with it. And there you go. Plenty of electrical tape. Uh, liquid electrical tape. A little. Can't say that word. Can I? Liquid electrical tape <laughs> inside uh, to stop any anything touching and getting uh, shorted out. Now, I think what I'm going to do is put a probe on each one of those. In theory, this is my theory working, if I spin it round, you would hazard a guess that you would get some sort of alternating signal. Let's try it. And that is what I'm getting. Um, let me see if I can do this one-handed. It's going to be tricky. There you go. Turn it round, and I'm getting an alternating signal. So maybe, just maybe, my dodger has worked. Let's hope, hey? So, I've got the cable routed back where it should be, coming up there onto that bracket just there, and obviously got the hub back on, got the cable tied professionally just there, so there, testing time. Right, the first test, switch the ignition on. Now, I'm not sure if you need to start the engine, but let's get in. Right, so, does the ABS light go out? <laughs> oh, you beauty! Oh, look at that! The ABS light goes off. Wow. <laughs> what can I say? Oh, there you go, all back together again. He can give the disc a little bit of a clean up too. Um, I think they're going to be okay. There's plenty of meat on them. And uh, all I need to see is if they're uh, if they're true or not. But time will tell. But seem okay at the moment. Right, so everything's back together, like I say. Um, the ABS seems to work. The shock, a little bit concerned about that. But to be honest, although it looks pretty bad, works very well. Um, returns springs and does what it's supposed to do spot on so um, I don't see the point replacing it personally it's not leaking or anything so yeah I think it'd be okay um, right less waffling let's get the wheel on and I think it's time for a test drive see if uh, what I've done today is um, is good work or rubbish okay test number one ignition on ABS light goes off. Perfect. EPS light's gone off. Perfect. Just the handbrake one on. Right, let's go test it. Right, we're in a nice little quiet area. Let's do an emergency brake. Well, there's a little bit of ABS there. Um, the roads are dry, so it didn't really slip. But uh, let's try another one. Kind of felt the ABS kick in, so I think it's working okay. But yeah, ABS is definitely working. Doesn't show the light on the dash, but it's definitely working. Right, success. That'll do for now. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's fixed. Um, I say I've got to do it all again because the tins never turned up. So when they turn up, um, it's, not a, it's not a big job, to be honest, and uh, the tins don't matter for now, but I definitely want to get them done. So the wheels and the hubs on both sides will have to come off again. Um, but as you can see, it's um, yeah, there's lots of, I did a, a little bit of polishing. There's a few marks on it. That's all it is. I mean, if I take you inside, it's it's like the other Tigra I had. Um, it is a bit dirty inside. It needs a damn good clean. The annoying thing is that so I'm going to look out for a second on seat because I don't like that. I mean, obviously it's ripped or something behind there, but um, yeah, that's that's just a bodge. I don't like that at all. Um, but other than that, inside, let me just take you around quickly. I say it's filthy, but it's pretty good. Um, it's actually got the wind deflector on this one as well. It's quite surprised about, and that makes a big difference when you actually got the top down. And the top, the roof works okay. The boot works fine. Everything works fine. I say it just needs um just needs a bit of TLC and that's what it's gonna get. Right, that'll do for now. I will catch you in the next one, which um I, I'm guessing 
might be a, a good clean up. Um, <laughs> that's probably the next job because the missus at the moment refuses to get into it because, um, yeah, it's so dirty. Right, catch you later, YouTube. Have a good weekend and a good week and, well, a good everything. Bye bye.